I want to thank everybody for uh, attending uh, this uh, Potash 101 uh, webinar series. My name is Philip Schaefer. Uh, my career consists of uh, starting with the company back in 1975 in production and our test facility. 1986 went into field service. 94 was a service manager. 2006 Gunlock Regional Sales Manager. And in 2012 the Parasource Regional Sales Manager for the western part of the United States and Canada. What is potash? Potash refers to potassium components and potash bearing materials. The most common being potassium chloride, KCL. The deposits are usually naturally occurring mixture of uh, potassium chloride and sodium chloride, better known as common table salt. When mining for potash, you run into a mixture of potash salts and clays. The World Potash Reserves, you can see on the map, there's a good concentration, 46% in Canada, around Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. There's some in New Brunswick. The United States have has 1%. You can see in Brazil, Chile, Germany, Russia, Jordan, and China. Potash used by crop. You can see the different types of crops that require the potash. The 14% for all other crops, sugar and cotton, 11%. Fruits and vegetables, 22%, grains, 37%, and 16% for oil seed. Potash used by region. Latin America, 21%, North America, 16%, Asia, 16%, 8% in India, China, 21%. With some of the pictures you can see in the upper left hand corner, the uh, potash ore and some of the uh, granular products that's produced. Lower left hand, that's the granular products. And as you can see, upper right hand for the wheat, lower right hand is for the fruit trees. How is potash mined? Conventional room and pillar, solution mining, and solar ponds. Conventional mining is called room and tiller. The material is mucked out of the certain areas of the mine, keeping the pillars in place to support the back, which is the top of the mine. The material is brought over to the uh, shaft and brought out to the surface for further processing. Solution mining is when the potash is a lot deeper than it's worth conventionally mining. You can see it's as much as 750 uh, meters deep. So basically they drill a, a well, pump a brine down, bring it back up, dehydrate it, and further process it. Another way of mining for potash is evaporation, solar process. Two ways of this is being done by gathering the brine is, is uh, of course the solution mining and also the uh, brine from ponds or lakes. It's brought over, the brine sits in the pond, the sun dries the pond, and then the salt and potash mix is the excavated and moved to the plant for further processing. Preferred sizing equipment for potash. Where is terra source equipment used in the potash processing? Raw ore feeding and crushing? These slime screen oversized? 
compaction circuit, and agglomerated materials. You can see in this slide that the uh, crushing upper left-hand corner is roll crushers or impact crushers. You can also put screens in this circuit and also the oversized tailings can be sized. Other TerraSource global equipment, vibrating feeders can be used in the dry side, roll crushers for wet or dry, cage packers for wet or dry, reversing impactors for wet or dry material. This is a typical simple sketch of how the equipment can be put in a compaction circuit. As you can see, the compactor is compacting the finer material. Under the compactor, you have a four roll crusher sizing the flake. After it's sized, it goes to the screen decks. The coarser oversized can go to a cage mill. The near size can go to roll mills. Product of course, the finished product, anything finer would go back to the compactor. The Jeffrey Rader electromechanical vibrating feeders, like I said, are also used in the circuits. It's very important to feed the crushers properly and spread the material for proper wear on the impactors or the uh, roll crushers. Roll crusher applications, raw ore, potash flake, are agglomerated materials. As you can see, the roll crushers can be two roll, single stage, four roll, double stage. We also can put the equipment on common bases. The common base supports not only the crusher, the guards, the motors, and any other equipment, lubrication systems, controls, anything you might want to put and uh, attach to the equipment. Spreading the material across the length of the roll is very important. It helps increase roll wear life and also helps with the capacity of the machine. The proper trajectory or feeding device is also important. You want the material to come into the center of the rolls, not hitting on one roll or the other. Normally, we like to stay around the three to one reduction. Upper rolls, grabbing the larger material, sizing it for the lower sizing roll. As you can see, we're making a nice cubicle product not generating a lot of fines, helping with the mass balance of the plant. The equipment, the roll crushers basically have a manual adjustment, a standard lubrication system, specially designed crusher rolls to maximize the yield, and also mounted on a common base. Very unique feature that only the TerraSource equipment roll crushers have is coupling mounted rolls, which don't have to be disturbed. Uh, don't have to disturb the main bearings to get the rolls in and out. That's a very nice feature. Removal rails are also supplied with the equipment. As you can see, the housing of the crushers are split for ease of roll removal. Cage factor applications, wet oversize and dry oversize. Cage factor basically is an open bottom machine. The material enters the center and the material is sized through three or four rows of impact 
So the only variable in the machine is basically the speed of it. Types of cages fabricated with overlay type material, hard surface material, are the bolt-on type striking plates. As you can see, the lifting hook is a tool for getting the cages in and out of the machine, but there's also an option of a cage jack that's part of the machine. The cage jack, as you can see in this photograph, that it makes it very easy to get the cages in and out. Reversing impact applications, wet oversized, it works quite nicely for that. The impactors are a little more forgiving than the cage tractor when it comes time for uh, passing some tramp metal. The hammer will swing back, allowing it to pass. With any piece of equipment, we like to have protection for the equipment. So basically with the reversing impactor, material enters the top, it's thrown against the impact plate and sized out the bottom. Very easy to replace the hammers, access door to remove the suspension bar, and the hinged side for removing the impact plate. The nano sizer applications, dry, near size, and oversized material works quite nicely. The nano sizer is a two motor drive machine with a specially designed roll for maximizing the yield. It's got a hydraulic adjustment to keep the rolls in place during the operation of the machine. As you can see, the rolls are a corrugated type roll with wear components on either end and also the inlet of the machine. Rotex has been used in the industry quite often. A uh, very good mineral separator that's been used uh, in most potash salt applications. Rotex is one of our sister companies. We also have a demonstration and development center in Duncan, South Carolina, which we can use anytime for uh, test crushing. We have a lot of different types of equipment. We have roll crusher, roll mill, cage packer, impactor, hammer mill, and coal packer, and also the Jeffrey Flex tooth, vibrating feeder, and a posmetric feeder. So we can monitor and screen a lot of the different materials we get into the test facility. As you can see, we require a certain amount of material 355 gallon drums of material, and we can uh, show what we can do with your uh, type of material. It's another view of the test facility and the screening. We can show you what we can do there. Are there any questions? Um, have you run any quest any tests of potash at the demonstration and development center? And can you talk about some of the results that you have? We've done quite a bit of testing on potash in our uh, development center, and the results have been very good, helping increase in the yield. Of course, we're testing for raw ore uh, in the roll crusher, and also the impactors, cage mills, and on the compaction circuit, the flight breakers. And again, the flake breaker just isn't a flake breaker. It also sizes the material uh, prior to the screen and then the oversized secondary crusher, which could be a cage mill or, or nano sizer or roll mill. Any other questions? Okay, well, I think we gave everybody enough time to submit through the Q&A box, and I don't see any other questions coming through. So um, if you have any questions, after the presentation, if you think of them, go ahead and contact Phil directly or give us a call at our uh, main office number. Um, you can also go to terrasource.com. Thank you all for attending.